Moin and welcome to the links. In today's video, I'll show you what happens when I just jump into a project without any planning. <laughs> it was a little difficult from time to time, but also a lot of fun. But let me just show you. As a base, I chose this Laguna doll because I never customized one before and I thought her face was cute. <laughs> Moreover, I love blue color palettes and this project should include all the stuff that I like. First step was to remove her greasy hair and factory paint with pure acetone. If you want more information on how I prepare my dolls, you can check out my How I Do Stuff video. After preparation, I had the body and head separated and ready for customization. I also removed the head cap because she needed some inserted eyes, like all of my dolls nowadays. <laughs> To do so, I had to cut out her eyes, and I started by sketching the form on the plastic. Now carefully with a sharp X-Acto knife piece by piece. Take your time with this step, because it's a little difficult. In the end, you receive two perfect eye holes like these. <coughs> okay, I did them pretty messy, because I had a plan. The first thing in this custom I wanted to try for a long time was head shrinking. Yes! <laughs> I watched some tutorials and decided to go with the fast 100% acetone method. For that I took a big glass jaw and fit it with the chemical. In goes the head and the head cap. Now I let them rest for 3 hours. But thanks to editing programs we can see the result just now. <laughs> Ooh, so wobbly and big! <laughs> Here you can see a comparison between a normal Draculaura head and our big acetone lady. <laughs> the head now dried for about a day. After that you can see that the head clearly is smaller, but for me it was not enough. So in the acetone it goes again. I shrunk and dried the head three times in the end. In the meantime I was able to work on the body. And here my way of suffer began. <laughs> I always had a problem with the knee joints of Monster High Dolls because they were so small and a little limited in movement, for my taste. So clever me was like, hey, I can make them better. So I removed her underlegs, which was a little tricky, and even cut her feet. Because why not giving her some ankle joints too, right? First I started with the knees by cutting, sanding and shaping both parts of the leg to be able to place a new joint in the middle. After a long time I finally had a satisfying result and could start modeling. I took my polymer clay and mixed some colors together to match her skin. To be honest, I felt so clever. <laughs> I formed the little joints and even tried modeling some new feet, but I gave up on that pretty quickly. The clay went in the oven for half an hour and here they are. They already fit pretty good, but it was a little more fine tuning necessary. Luckily polymer clay is pretty soft, so the editing was easy for me. I always checked in between if they were good before I changed a little bit more. Then it was time to connect them with the legs. I took my new wonderful hand dremel and made a hole in the legs and joints to insert a wire later. I have to say that it worked really good and I'm still really proud of this first try, even though I didn't improve the movement really much. <laughs> for attaching the wire I used a two-part epoxy glue for extra strength. Like I said, for my first try I'm really proud and I think it's a good outcome. I mean after all the thickness of the knees looks much more appealing to me like that. So success! <laughs> Where the glue dried, I went back to the head, that looked like that now. Well, I guess I can call the shrinking a success, what do you think? <laughs> the plastic got a little harder during the process, so I was a little concerned about rerouting, but I wanted to try it anyway. For that, I chose this aqua green yarn. But first, I painted the head so that the hair looks fuller in the end. Moreover, I spontaneously decided to give her new ears. So I removed the old ones with a knife and centered the spot soft. I was also thinking about horns at this point and had to know where they would be before the rerouting. Yeah, I know, a lot of last minute decisions here, but that's what happens when you want to try body mods without having an idea of our character. <laughs> 
I took some wire and made a base for her future horns that I modeled with my two part epoxy clay. Have you really thought there will be no epoxy in this video? If so, you know me bad. <laughs> I gave her these Maleficent like horns with a little more detail than just plain smooth horns. As you can see it was a little difficult to sculpt because I waited a little too long. <laughs> Last minute decisions, you remember? For the final drying I removed the horns from the head again to be able to start rerouting. But then I remembered her ears so I started with them instead. <laughs> The custom screamed sea creature to me at this point, so I wanted her to have some fishy ears. I sketched them out on paper to have a rough size and traced them on some blue plastic. The idea was to melt the material around a wire to have the ears a little more flexible, but it wasn't working out as planned. I tried out a flat iron, your V resin and a few tries with hot glue until I received something that I liked. I even gave her some earrings as you can see now, but I later switched the silver wire with the gold one because I thought that looks better. And then it was finally time for the reroute. Like always I split the yarn into thinner strands and threaded them with a needle that I punched through her head. If you want more information on that please consider watching one of my other repaints. For her custom I thought of an iro with shaved sides. The plastic was a little harder because of the shrinking, but I started rerouting very soon after the last day of drying, so it was still soft enough to punch a needle through. Oh, this was my boyfriend who bought me some ice cream. So I guess it's time for a snack break now. <laughs> after the break I finished rerouting and brushed out the yarn to flat it afterwards with a flat iron. Then I went back to the horns and sanded them down. I also added a little more details on them with my Dremel as you can see here. When I was done I decided to paint them with brown. I just took a thin layer so the grey of the epoxy can shine through. When that was dry I went over them with dry brushing gold. It gave them a little steampunk vibe which I absolutely love and pushed it a little further by adding a piercing on one horn later. Now they needed to go back on the head. I widened the holes again and glued them with a strong glue to the head. To give them even more security I attached them inside the head with my hot glue gun. I was absolutely in love with her and I was sure that she was going to be one of my best customs. I mean look at her! <laughs> at this point I was attached to the sea dragon creature so I made a smoother transition from head to horns with epoxy clay and gave her some scales under her eyes. Addicted to scales at this point I gave her even more on her body. For that I just smashed a layer of epoxy on her upper body and made some lines with my clay tool. You remember me saying that I like steampunk? Yeah, she gets some rag wheels as wings, don't ask me why. But like I said I just collected some things I wanted to try or that I generally like for this custom. I attached the wheels to the body with my trustworthy epoxy and added some scales on her knees as well. Oh, yeah, I also made a hole in her lower back for a tail and sculpted a little epoxy around her original feet. Again, a project without a plan so that everything was a bit chaotic. <laughs> but speaking of feet, the original plan was to form new ones that I can connect with a joint, but everything was just too small so that I decided to glue her original feet back onto the body. The ankle joint project is for another day. <laughs> but at least I modded her feet so that she has some claws. I set everything to dry and came back the next day just to see her leg was broken, no! <sighs> I realized that the polymer clay was just too soft for these little things. It broke where the wire went through the material and the clay got too thin. Luckily the other joint was a little thicker so at least that. <laughs> I then spent days with thinking on how to fix this problem. I thought of resin cast but decided to try 3D printing. Then I had to learn a new program with which I can model the joint digitally and ask my dad to test print them. But it wasn't working out, the wire in the leg was irremovable and I had problems with the program and oof. I got really frustrated so I decided to tackle this problem another day. Maybe when I saved a little money so that I can buy myself a very fine 3D printer for doll stuff to experiment a little before incorporate this in my customs. But I really want to someday. 
For now, I had to accept my failure and started thinking about other solutions so that I could finish her. I decided that she would receive a wooden leg and with that her story was born. So at least I'm really thankful for this accident. <laughs> now it was finally time for the face up. I sprayed her face and body with Mr. Super Clear Sealant and grabbed my watercolor pencils and soft pastels. At first I gave her some blushing on her forehead and cheeks, nose and mouth. I wanted her to have a very watery look so I just used many different blues and some greens. For the waterline of her eyes and the inner eye corner, I used a light flash watercolor pencil. After that, I drew her eye line with a straight black pencil and gave her a dark blue eyeshadow. Like I already said for a few times, the plastic of her head got really hard after shrinking and after a few more days of drying, it was even harder. So it was a little difficult for me to draw a straight line with the pencils, but it worked out in the end. I just went in with different shades of blue to emphasize her blushing and eyeshadow. I also added a little shadow around her nose bridge to bring out the shape. Between the layers of sealant, I painted her scales with white, which looked much better in my opinion. More blushing, darkening the colors and bring out some highlights around the eyes with a white pencil. I also added some eyebrows of course and her face was done. I saved my work with a layer of Mr. Super Clear and went back for some last finishing touches. I had a metallic acryl paint with the name Mother of Pearl White, which sounded perfect for my custom, so I added this to the white scales on her face and glued a little rhinestone pearl on her forehead. Her horns got a little dull because of the sealant, so I brushed over them once again for some extra shine. I guess you have noticed that I was not able to hide the epoxy to plastic transition perfectly, but it's not that visible in real life. As a last touch for the face, I gave her some lashes that I glued in her eyes with PVA glue. Now it was time to paint her body. The first thing I did was to color in the mods with acrylic paint. I thought of making them brown like her horns, but in the end it looked too dark and I changed it to light blue later on. For blushing, I basically did the same thing I did with her face, just adding a lot of blues and some greens everywhere. <laughs> except for her back, where I also added pink around the wheels, so it looks a little more like scar tissue. When everything was done and sealed, I painted her scales with the same pearl white I used on her face, to have them all shimmery shiny. <laughs> now that the painting was done, she needed some eyes that I prepared with white polymer clay. It was really tricky, because they had to be much smaller than the eyes I usually make, because, you remember, I shrunk her head. <laughs> I decided to give her brown eyes with gold shimmer just like her horns because I already had so much blues in her design that some browns would look harmonious. After adding a pupil to the iris, I gave them lenses with UV resin and cured them for a few minutes under UV light. These are not my best eyes by far, but they still look good and with a little more practice I'm sure they will be as good as my bigger eyes. Like always, I put the head back onto the body before placing the eyes inside the head. Again, the plastic got really hard, but a treatment with my hair dryer made it soft enough to place the head back, even though I had to widen the neck hole before. I heard lots of people who had trouble with the plastic after shrinking, but with what I experienced, it's really good to work with in the state. Nothing compared with the big Monster High dolls, where I really had trouble to work with the plastic. This one is very comfortable to work with, at least for me, but maybe I just had luck. <laughs> Speaking of luck, you already saw that her leg broke again. Again. But okay, I'll be fine. I just glued it back on. Now she can only bend one leg. For inserting the eyes, I used epoxy clay again. My solution for everything. <laughs> but it was really tricky to place them in the small head, so I had to do it off camera. We are nearly done, my friends. I punched her ears that I made earlier back into her head and attached them from the inside with hot glue. Thanks to the wire, they even are movable now. How cool! Everything was now back on and in her head, so that I was able to glue her head cap back on. Sadly, it shrunk different than the rest of her head, so it was quite far from a perfect fit. But okay, lesson learned. Next time I try a different way. So, she's done now, right? Wrong! <laughs> you remember the hole in her lower back? Yeah, I planned to give her a tail, but I completely forgot about that until now. 
Anyway, I wanted her to have a thin tail with a bushy fur tip, so I took a wire and glued some tape around it to have a better hold for the yarn. It's the same that I used for the hair, by the way. I thought it was a cool idea to use the plastic again that I used for her ears, but it looked too crappy no matter what I did. I mean, look at this. So, I made another one the same way, but instead of plastic I used fabric. To attach it to the body, I grabbed some two-part epoxy glue and set it to dry. Yeah, she's done! <laughs> no, no, no. She needs an outfit! I sewed her a simple skirt off-camera and gave her some accessories. For example, a cool fishing net with some beads. <laughs> Sadly, I just had the idea to tape it down when I was midway through, but hey, better late than never! Overall, it's a nice result for my first try, I think. The second thing she needed was a stick she can use to walk with because of her wooden leg and to use magic because she has some special powers. So it's not really a stick but more of a wand I guess. <laughs> I decorated it with some beads and thread so that it has a little more personality and fits her design. Now she's done and we only have to combine everything. Oh, I was so excited that I totally forgot the chain around her chest that I later added. Luckily, before the photo shoot. <laughs> but yeah, here she is! <laughs> I love her so much! Especially her shrunken head. I guess I will incorporate this in all my customs now. It's just too beautiful! <laughs> what do you think? I know what you think. You want to hear her story, right? Okay, so sit down, my little lynxes. I have a story to tell. <laughs> you remember the world I created for most of my characters? With a magic wall that separates humans and magic beings? She's also part of this universe. In fact, she's one of the oldest magic creatures living on the planet. She even existed when there was no wall, no different kingdoms, just one united world. Her name is Thea, and she's one of the few magic beings that can control one element. That's also why she has some strong dragon features in her appearance, because dragons once were the most powerful and holy creatures on the planet. Taya herself has the power to control water, that's why you can only find her near the ocean. When the war began and the wall appeared, the oceans on the human side changed. They got wild and dangerous, so Taya decided to use her powers to save human sailors when they got in danger on the sea. But with the time, the people forgot her goodwill and started wondering why she's always there when things got dangerous. They started hunting her. They tried killing her, all of them. It was a giant battle on the sea, but she was able to escape. Defeated, traumatized, wounded. Since that day, no one has ever seen her again, but some people whisper that she's still out there, somewhere, behind the wall in the deep peaceful sea of the magic lands. So yeah, that was Taya's story, I hope you liked it. Maybe I should really start naming the world I created and make an explanation video about so you know where my dolls live. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and a little announcement for my next project. I will participate in Delightful's Tropical Mega Collab. <laughs> I'm already really excited and have some ideas, so let's see what I can come up with. You will see the doll in her video first and then here on my channel, so keep your eyes open for that. Until then, have a wonderful day my little lynxes. Thank you so so much for watching, for your lovely words and for your support in general. It means so much to me. See you soon! Cheers! <laughs>